So what we're going to look at is the foreign policy between World War I and World War II. We kind of looked at this with the Dr. Seuss cartoons last time, but I'm coming back just to review us because, again, I don't know how much from 11 days ago y'all remember. Actually, 13 days ago. Okay, so uh, what we're going to look at is Harding and Coolidge. They're Republican presidents, and they realize, have we signed the Treaty of Versailles? No. no. Did we join the League of Nations? So we're basically still at war with Germany. And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna convene nations of the world to come together to Washington. And they're gonna sign several treaties, but we're gonna look at these treaties and talk about why they're important and how they're gonna deter war. The first one is the Five Power Treaty, saying that nations could not build up navies. And they're gonna give ratios. They're gonna say you should limit your arms and your military to Great Britain having five boats. The U.S. having five boats, Japan having three, Italy and France having 1.67. Who do you think is going to be upset with this treaty? Italy and France. Italy, France, and who else? Japan. Because did they get an equal amount? Of course no. not. No. And so who do you think is openly going to violate this? Great Britain. France. France. Who else? Italy. Italy. Who else? Japan. Oh. They're going to violate it because they got less. So should the U.S. at this moment, when they start building up their Navy, come in saying, hey, y'all are violating a treaty? Should they have come in? No. They're well, violating this treaty. Yes. yes. Do you think they come in? Yes, no. but a little, too little, too late. They come in too late, exactly. They don't come in at first, but does this cause the, does this cause the war when nations don't enforce laws? Yes. Yes, it causes chaos. And this is how World War II is going to commence, is that none of these treaties will be enforced. The aggressors are going to get out of control. And when the aggressors get so out of control, can they be tamed? All right? Let's look at the next one, the Four Power Treaty, that they would respect each other's territory in the Pacific. This is between Great Britain, the U.S., Japan, and France. What nation do you think is not going to follow this? Great Japan. Britain? Japan. They're going to take over Guam. They're going to take over the Philippines. They're going to take over China. This next one, we should respect the territory of China. Do you think anybody's going to respect China? No. No. And it's specifically Japan that invades China for their resources. They're going to invade Laos and Cambodia and Vietnam. And that's what will take us into the Vietnam War in the 60s. So looking at this, we had ways to prevent war, but will they be enforced? It is the open violations of this that is the opening signals of World War II. The next treaty is the Kellogg Brand Pact. This one was to renounce aggression. So I always remember Kellogg was supposed to bring peace. Y'all know Kellogg is a cereal, cereal, right? Yeah. It's Kellogg Brand Pact. So I always remember it as the brand, Kellogg Brand. Mm -hmm. If I see cereal in the morning, it brings me peace. This one was supposed to bring peace because it was supposed to renounce aggression. Did the U.S. really renounce aggression of Japan? Could they have? Yes. They had all these treaties, but do they enforce the laws? And it's the last, if y'all knew this, if y'all know that the cops were not going to enforce the speed limit, what would y'all do? Oh, speed, all the speed all the time. You're going to go, okay, so the right here. In front of the school, the speed limit's about 30, 40. 55. 55. 55. Yeah, oh, gosh, it. that was at the old school. It was yeah, 30. Okay. Y'all know it already. Y'all don't want to get caught. If y'all know that the police is not going to enforce the law, what are y'all going to do? You're taking 100. Okay, so looking at this, Japan knows that the U.S. is not enforcing these laws. Are they going to do as they please? So is the U.S. at fault here for World War II at least occurring? Are they totally at fault? No. No. But by them not enforcing the law, did that allow Japan to run reckless? Yes. It's like and peer so, pressure. Yeah. They're not totally at fault because you did. Okay. Because we weren't involved in enforcing the rules. Just imagine at the start of the year, the, years, the rules weren't enforced at the school. Dress code, IDs. How would it be in April? For oh, this, them trying to control the school. It's over. It's over. School year. I used to be yeah, at the, the show the there. <laughs> Every day. Hey, it's going to get crazy. Uh, okay. 
So now, do you all see how the lack of enforcement of rules sets up World War II? Okay, Latin America, we're, troops are going to remain in Nicaragua and Haiti. We're going to double our investment there. But then the depression happens. Do you think we want to keep our troops there? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, um, tariffs in the 20s, were they high or were they low? High. High. Okay, they were supposed to pay back debt. Who owed the U.S. money? And we've already talked about Germany. this before. Before Germany. Great who, Britain. Great Britain. Britain. Who owed the allies, like Great Britain money? Germany. 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 Can Germany pay back the Allies? No. So if the Allies are not getting paid back by Germany, the Allies can't pay who? The U.S. So we came up with a pea brain of idea called the Dawes Plan. Who was the U.S. banks going to loan money to? Germany. Germany. And what was Germany was supposed to industrialize? That means that they could pay back who? Great Britain. And then Great Britain could pay back who? U.S. And then eventually, in the long run, who would pay us back? Germany. Did this work out? Not a chance. No, they were supposed to use it to industrialize, but they're going to use it to militarize. Okay, just another way World War II commences, all brought to you by the United States. Good job, US. I know. So Hoover comes in, and we see, have we been enforcing these treaties? No. And so Hoover and his Secretary of State, Henry Stuyvesant, start realizing that Japan's getting out of control, right? They're building up their navy. Were they supposed to do that? Mm -hmm. They're invading China. Were they supposed to do that? They're taking over other people's islands. Were they supposed to do that? So Hoover and Seisman are going to go in, and they're going to ask the League of Nations to do something. Does the League of Nations have any power? No. And so the League did nothing. So Steisman declared that the U.S. would honor its obligations under the Nine Power by refusing to recognize what they took from China. Okay, so I just want you to imagine. I come in and I steal her purse. She gonna get upset? Yeah. Who is she gonna report me to? The principal. She reports me to Mr. Casas. And I convince Mr. Casas, oh no, I'm just borrowing it. And Mr. Casas is like, oh, that's fine, Miss Verdine. Is she still upset? Of course. Because what do I have? Purse. That's exactly what the U.S. is doing now. They've gone in, Japan has gone into China, taken their land. And the U.S. at this moment is saying, did they really take their land? No. Is China upset? Yes. Yes. I'm going to give you back your purse. I'm sorry. <laughs> but do you see the U.S.? We saw this on the political cartoons. We kept on saying Japan invading China. Was it a war? No. It was an incident. So do we stop Japan as being an aggressor? No. Okay, so we go on a good world tour, and we're going to remove our troops. Why is Latin America happy with that? Is the U.S. dominating Latin America yes. anymore? No. No, we're moving our troops. We're in a, in a depression. And now this commences our good neighbor policy. Basically, we are pledging we will not intervene in Latin America's internal affairs. They will have sovereignty over their politics. Is that a being a good neighbor? Letting them control what's going on in their backyards. Okay? And we're going to see that we pledge to submit disputes to arbitrations versus openly fighting them. America is stepping out of Latin America. And this is what's going to commence eventually when we get out of World War II is people rising to power that are upset of U.S. involvement. We're going to see this in Cuba. We're going to see this in Nicaragua. We're going to see this in Colombia. And a lot of these countries turn towards communism. Okay, but I'm going to explain that later. We nullify the Platt Amendment. We're no longer involved in Cuba. Um, in Mexico, um, the people like Pancho Villa, Cardenas, are all rising up trying to get U.S. out of there. And the U.S. removes our troops. We're no longer involved in Mexico. Okay? Is America being imperialistic? Yes. Or are we going against imperialism? Wrong. Going, going against. against. Good morning, guys. Okay. Last thing we need to talk about is we're in the Depression. We're going to have a world conference. Everybody's going to come to London. And they're going to figure out how do we fix the world's economy. Everybody's on their way. And Roosevelt is on his way on his yacht. He's like, man, I have a lot of problems. I have the world's problems on my hand because the U.S. is the number one industrial power. 
And also, remember when we were in the 30s, he had that new deal. Did he do a lot of stuff in the new deal? Yes. So he's like, man, I need to go and fix the world's problems or I need to go back and work on the new deal. What do you think he chooses? New deal. He doesn't go to the conference. When they hear the number one person, the number one economic power in the world is not going, what do you think happens to this conference? It shuts down. It falls apart. And people like Benito Mussolini go back to Italy saying, we were trying to solve the world's problems and they didn't. I have a way to solve it. Let's militarize. Hitler goes back home, same thing. Let's militarize and overnight, their factories start booming. People have jobs. This is the time, um, I don't know if you've ever heard that Germany has the Olympic Games here. Oh, they Jesse have the, Owens. Yes, Jesse Owens is running here. They're industrializing, and overnight, do you think they have a depression anymore in Germany? Mm -hmm. No. Italy starts to industrialize. They start to follow in the footsteps of Germany. And so now, totalitarian regiments start to take heed because this conference falls apart. The U.S., its economy is not getting better, so we start to trade with the Soviet Union. From 1917 to 1933, we had not recognized the Soviet Union because of what politics? What issue? They are what? Communists. Communists. We recognize them here because we want to trade with them. And this leads us to the reciprocal trade treaty that we're going to lower trade tariffs. Does that end the depression? No. What truly ends the depression in America World is World War II. II. The last thing I have to talk about is the Philippines. The Philippines were one of our territories that we got in the Spanish-American War. Do we have enough money at this time to take control of the Philippines? No. So the U.S. is going to send it on its independence. Remember Emilio Aguilando, he was wanting that? Mm -hmm. So they're, we're saying by 1946, they're going to be independent. In between this time of Tulich, from 1933 to 46, there's going to be a country that takes them over. Who do you think takes them over? China. Japan. Okay. They're getting closer to getting to Hawaii, and it's taking over all of these little islands, which is a violation of the Four Power Treaty that leads to the commencement of World War II. Okay, this was all stuff we did before break. It was a review. Are y'all remembering this? Yes. Okay, what we're gonna do now is you have two things. I'm gonna borrow your stuff to show people on the other side. You have this thing that says World War II home front groups, along with this reading. That's what you're gonna be working on in class. After you're done with it, you'll put it in the box I would like the reading to be recycled. So go next to the box. Our homework is burdens of power. Do y'all want me to pass that out to you so you don't forget about it? Okay, and I'm gonna come around and look at study guides.